Native Friendship Center, in cooperation with the Niagara Parks Commission, is sponsoring their first annual powwow and would like to take this opportunity to invite you personally to this major cultural exposition. Dancers and drummers from all over Eastern Canada. For more information, call 905-871-8931. Sego, Sikoli, hello and welcome to the 25th annual powwow hosted by the Fort Erie Native Friendship Center. My name is Kirsten Ransom and I'm so excited to share with you just a glimpse into the cultures that have existed on this land since time immemorial. This is the day I get to see so much of the community and uh, so much of, of people in, uh, in the uh, Niagara region. Um, see all the babies, I was just enjoying the babies uh, dancing and, or trying to get them dance. And, I, and visiting with community members is what, I, is what I'll do as I'm moving through the crowd or as I see people, so it's a fun day. It's, it's what we wanted from the beginning when we first started the center and now we got it, we got the people coming, all ages, all generations. So it's, it's a fun day, it makes me feel young. Well, it's great to have you here with us today. Um, is this powwow something that you regularly attend? Uh, yeah, so I think I've been coming here for maybe the last 10 years now, I'd say, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. And what about this particular powwow keeps you coming back every year? It's like uh, my family comes here too. I have family that lives in Fort Erie. Um, my Aunt Joni, she lives here. And uh, we have some family in Buffalo just across the water. So it's nice to get together with my American family, my auntie from here, and just get together dance, you know. And here we are with another community member today. Adrian, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what brings you out to Powwow? Sure, I'm from Six Nations Reservations. It's about 70 miles from here. I'm a Golden Ager uh, lady dancer, traditional. Been traditional my whole life since I was about, since I was born, but I've been dancing my whole life. Um, so what is it that brings you out to powwow today? I know it's, it's a little bit of a ways from your home. Right, family, and we come here every year for their powwow. We've been coming since it started on and off, so. My mother's 82 years old, so she loves to come to powwow. Um, I think it's just having a lot of really close friends, um, even like adopted family members that live around this area that I come out and visit with, sing with, dance with. Um, it's just kind of what the whole purpose of a powwow is, right? Um, it's a social gathering, right? It, there's, when people talk about um, ceremony, right? Like for our people, this isn't ceremony, this is a social gathering. This is the same as going, you know, um, to like a club social, but for our people, this is how we socialize. We get together and we bring our drums out, we bring our songs out, um, and we sing. We sing for the people that, that aren't able to sing, and we dance for those people um, that aren't, aren't able to dance anymore, you know, the ones that have become too old the ones that were never given the ability to dance, those are the ones that we're dancing for when we're out there. This is, um, the jingle dress is a medicine dance and it's a healing dance. Um, so it traditionally, um, they call upon the jingle dress dancers um, when there's healing that needs to be done into a community. There is a big long story, but I'll give you the gist of it. Um, so there's a granddaughter, um, she was really sick and her, gran her grandpa had a dream of this dress. So he had made her this dress, they put her in this dress and they carried her around the circle and come completion of going around the circle, she was able to dance and she was healed. Yeah, and originally, like we used like, these met these metal cones, but they would be, would have been shells. So you are 
in the role of lead male dancer today. Can you tell us a little bit about what that means and what that role looks like? Yeah, so um, the head male dancer, as for how I was taught about it, and one of the people that taught me about the head male dancer role was uh, Delbert Jonathan. Um, a lot of people around here know him as JR. And what I was taught is that it's our responsibility to dance um, as many songs as we possibly can. And that's to kind of keep the people motivated to keep dancing. And also we're supposed to be there to, um, to look out for all the dancers. So if any other dancer has an issue um, while they're at the POW, they're supposed to come to the head dancers, either head male or head female, so that we can go address it with the arena director or the community. There's supposed to be kind of that, um, that protocol that's followed and that's what head dancers are there in place for, is to kind of um, not protect, but look out for the best interests of all the other dancers in that circle that day. So that's generally why dancers um, that get asked to do that have been dancing for, for a while and kind of know how to carry that role. And I noticed you're here with your two daughters today and I just was wondering if, what it means to you to share this day with them. It honestly, it melts my heart even to have um, did have brought Elsie, my, my older daughter, out into grand entry and to just watch her like do it and how she loves the dance be like it, it literally melts my heart. So, well thank you so much. It really was heartwarming to watch you walk out with Elsie and it's it's amazing. It seems like she was literally just walks right into the culture, knows exactly what to do. So it's yeah. absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Because I do have a seven-year-old, and mm -hmm. she has been coming to the Pow Wow since, like, uh, since she was born. Um, she was like a month old when I first brought her to this Pow Wow. Yeah, I have pictures of that. So, and she's danced every year, and she's seven now. So, this she's one of the biggest reasons as why I dance, so that she can see that and um, carry that on as well, and be proud. In the summer. How important is this to your people, your culture, to have uh, It's very important because we're handing down traditions and culture to our children, teaching them about ethics, morals, values, their history. Uh, as far as opposed to other histories and versions of history. It was always a vision of, of people who have uh, stayed here all these years and seeing uh, us older now, back then we were young, so it's, it's nice to see, like my grandkids are here, my son is cooking, uh, my nephew is here, my sister's here, and of course my daughter who uh, hangs around here all the time. Our powwow is like our biggest event that we host here at the Fort Erie Native Center and it's like, I don't know, it's just something about the energy that's here that uh, it's just, to be able to like be out there right now and look and see what's happening, it makes, um, it just makes all the hard work and all the challenges that we endure like from the back end of things so rewarding. This particular event, the Midwinter Pow Wow, I think it's just a celebration of, um, of everybody coming together and gathering and um, over, like we just went through the winter, right? And now we're about to approach on spring and this is just a nice way to, um, to see everybody and it just kicks off the, the spring equinox for us and it's a great way to meet people, see people, visit, and um, yeah. Today we dance, today we celebrate. Thank you for coming today as our guests. Have fun, take care of our vendors, eat well. Be proud to be Indigenous. On behalf of the board and staff of the Fort Erie Native Friendship Center, welcome to our 25th annual Midwinter Power. Standing here with Wayne Redekop, the mayor of Fort Erie. I was just hoping to ask you some questions about your involvement at the Friendship Center. Sure. So what is it that keeps you coming back to these events? I keep coming back because as the mayor of Fort Erie, I try to show support for all of the uh, organizations in town. And the Indigenous community is a very, very important part of our community. And I like coming because I always learn something new. And I'm standing here with Wayne Gates. Wayne, what is it that brings you out to the powwow today? Well, first of all, I want to say I've been coming to the powwow for years, uh, so it's not the first time I've been here. But I think it's, it's an opportunity to celebrate uh, First Nations culture, uh, to talk about the important contribution that they make to uh, the area, uh, particularly Fort Erie. I'm looking forward to, to, to taking part and in to, in to sharing this, but I believe it will be a kind of a celebration of the culture, cultural traditions and the sharing of that with all of us that are lucky enough to be here today. This is going to be a fantastic day. I'm looking forward to awesome. it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to be here. Um, it's a celebration of our culture and our nations. 
uh, coming together to have fun and celebrate and to keep our traditions alive, to teach our children, um, to show our elders you know, that we're carrying it on and honoring our veterans and uh, making new friends and, and getting together with old friends. Every year it gets bigger and more people come. And the more people come, the more you see how, how much we've stuck together and what this place really means to the community as a community center. For, for all of us to come to and, and bring our families. It's, it's important for all of us as Indigenous people. They had the smoke dance. Uh, that uh, comes from our old war dance songs. And they used to speed it up when they had shows. And they had a, like, it's kind of like the singer versus the dancer. They wanted to speed up the songs to see how fast we can move our feet. And it became more of a contest. And, over time, uh, they incorporated more different social songs so the women could join too, uh, because the men only danced the war dance songs, uh, the thunder songs, and so the women wanted to, and they incorporated different social songs to speed them up, and then you have, that's why you have the women dance now, and now it's a huge competition. Like, it used to be more like a social thing, a show type thing. <laughs> And that brings us to the end of the 25th annual powwow hosted by the Fort Erie Native Friendship Center. Nyawe and thank you for joining us today as we spoke to community and learned about the different cultural offerings that this center has to offer. I think during my conversations today, something that kept ringing true for me was this quote that I really can't place, unfortunately, but the quote is that, they tried to bury us, but they didn't know that we were seeds. And I think today we see that growth continuing to happen. And as these years of powwow have continued and will continue into the future, we continue to grow and blossom as a beautiful community. For the Fort Erie Native Friendship Center, I'm Kirsten Ransom. Miigwech, Nyawe, and thank you.